situated, just let some breaths flow, huge inhales, exhales, bodies relaxed, just happy to be here. And kind of the image, the metaphor we're playing with today will take just a little bit of explanation. So this is a rock climbing principle. The idea is sometimes the holds are set up where they're all in a line. And when you go to move your hand to the next hold, it does this thing called a barn door where just moving your arm away from, um, from its stable place because everything else is set up in a line, your body swings open away from the wall. So that's called a barn door. Um, so as a beginner, it seems intuitive that it's like, I should have three points in contact with the wall before I move my fourth point, my next hand to come up. Um, but when it's all in a line, that doesn't set yourself up for success. It swings you away like that. Your momentum itself can kick you completely off the wall. So in order to counter that line, that barn door, you actually take one of your legs to flag it, is what it's called, off to the side. So it's not actually on a hold, but it's flagging off to the side. And that creates this, this balance act where then you can get your hands to, to move up without actually swinging away. So we're using that metaphor um, to represent how different times in our lives, if all of our resources are in one line, then it, it makes it so if that one line fails us, then we can swing away like the barn door effect. So instead, sometimes it's helpful to broaden ourselves outward to make ourselves expansive. So like metaphorically, I go to this person or place or thing for physical needs. And I go to this person place thing for emotional needs and this place for spiritual and this place for social and kind of broadening yourself out so that if one of those, you know, is that working for you for some reason, you still have all the other expansive areas that you've spread out to be those resources when you need it. Um, so that's our metaphor to, for today. And the way that we'll kind of build that up in our, our practice is by including a lot of poses that make us really big. So a lot of times we naturally kind of shrink into the small ball where it's, it's like, I want to play small. So instead today we're, we're spreading outward into lots of different directions. And so that's the, the fun idea that we're playing with for today. And so with that, to get us started, take the knees into the chest, so hand on each knee so that we can rock around and just tune in with the back. Make sure that that area is really, really good. Or even just checking in with it to recognize places where we need to be a little bit more kind and gentle in different ways. And then when you're ready, we're going to, going to be building up this first expansive pose into cat chasing its tail. So both knees will start to fall over to the left. We'll just start off with a simple twist, spread the arms open, pull the back muscles start to relax for a couple of breaths in the twist part of this pose. And you don't have to go further. If you'd like to start building up the next section, that would be a hamstring stretch. So your top leg, the right leg, starts to straighten out to the left side. The left hand would slide up the back side of the leg as far as you can reach. So sometimes it stops at the thigh, the calf, or some people can slide all the way down to the feet. The foot. Plus the second half, we've got the, I guess the second section, we've got the spinal twist and the hamstring stretch going on. If you want to set up the third part, this is the right hand, the free hand, grabbing for the left toes behind your back. You slide that knee to point down to the base of the mat. And then we've got a quadricep stretch at the same time. So how expansive this is. The chest is starting to open. The hamstrings are starting to open. This is the very quads. So expansive, can we let the breath flow?
One more huge breath in. Good, relax, exhale. As the hands release, the knees come back to a bend shape and then set the hips back on the floor. Rock around just a little bit before the second side. This gives us a chance to loosen up anything that was tight that we just discovered right now. Okay, when you feel ready, the knees will start to fall over to the right. And again, same approach, give it time. A couple of rest just to let the muscles of the back relax in this shape. straighten to start stretching. It's the top leg lengthening up to the right side. The right hand sliding down the back side of that leg. Maybe you stay here or maybe you take left hand to grab the right toes behind back and then slide the knee to point at the foot of the mat. we didn't shorten the breath, get deep and full. belly even, relax, exhale. Whenever your next exhale finishes, release the hands, the knees bend, invite the hips back to earth, and rock around for another moment. Knees wide, and we'll slide our hands to the outside edges of feet. Happy baby. You can be in stillness, trying to pull the hips into the stretch, the knees getting closer to the ground. But you're also welcome to rock if that feels a little bit better. one I would consider a smaller pose so let's start to expand outward and kick the right leg up to the sky as the left knee gets closer to ground and when that side feels happy switch side left leg up to the sky maybe a few rounds like that maybe even moments with both legs stretching outward release, let the feet back, close to glutes, hands slide in by the hips. We'll take a few bridge poses. So inhale, roll the hips up. Exhale, we're turning back down one vertebrae at a time, elbow down left. Slow with the breath, no need to rush. Inhale, exhale. Second one, we'll prepare for a fish pose. So lift up the hips one more time, 
slide the hands palm face down under the glutes lengthen the legs out it's almost like a little crunch to get up to an elbow prop squeeze the elbows in as close as you can walk them and then heart lifts up head rocks back maybe crown of head in contact with the floor and then the throat opening think of chest rise Two more breaths like that. Huge and expansive. Heart giving this chance to open. That's that second breath. Come back up to the elbow, prop the chin comes in. Then just free out the hands. As we press our way up to a comfortable seated. Decent. We'll work on our breath becoming expansive for a time. So inhale, circle up. Exhale, hands touch, trace down the midline. So a few good breaths, helping to center us. Helping the arms come into contact with all that space around us. Three more, deep and full. Inhale up again, then exhale, twist over the right shoulder. Stay for a moment. Next, inhale to rise up through center. Exhale, second side. Exhale, plant the right hand, lean over to the right. Next, exhale, rise both arms up to the center. And plant left hand, lean to left. both feet together as we approach cobbler's pose do what helps the muscles feel expansive so that might mean just keeping the hands planted behind so that it's like the hip area can flourish open like a flower or perhaps you feel expansive by helping the low back and the hip area by tilting forward so either way, rather than kind of feeling contracted and small, keep on allowing hips to open, open, open. The spine rises back up. Legs stretch open in both directions, a wide V. Drop the right hand to be in front of the right leg. Left hand reaches up and over. And rise, second side. And rise. Both hands walk through the center. You can have slightly bent knees if needed here. Nothing wrong with that, especially if that lets the hips join the party with us.
more breaths. Well, the breath continuing to expand as much space as possible. After that second breath finishes, walk the hands back in. Swing the legs underneath. Let's take a few cat cows. Once again, connect with the breath so at least the breath can be expanded. Cycle up and down. Good. Helping the toes out. We're tucking all five toes and then starting to send some weight back to the heels. If it's already intense, keeping the hands on the floor, stay here. If you can take more intensity, you'll walk your hands closer, maybe to the point of all of the torso weight over the feet. It doesn't have to go that far, no competition. Again, rather than thinking of pain and clenching, try to think of that space of the foot stretching, opening, expanding. Just a couple more breaths. Yeah, you can always come forward if needed. Inhale. And exhale, plant the hands, circle the feet or pop them out. Trying to get the opposite side of the feet, both feet point. Just try to sit back on that. You're planting your left hand to the left so that right hand can scoop up the right knee. That's a stretch. <laughs> for sure. If you need to take um, less intensity for this, lean even further to that side. That'll make it a little bit easier. So right hand on right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, when you're ready, lower this side down, switch it out. <laughs> yeah, don't feel like it has to lift to the point of too much pain, just, just a stretch. Good. When we set it back down, come back to kneeling and let the feet release again, rolling more power. As you start to head up to downward facing dog, let yourself tuck the toes, lift the feet, and if the feet still want to kind of roll and pedal the knees out, that's absolutely allowed. Continue the idea of loosening up the areas that might be tight. Beautiful. Stillness for a moment, hips lifting high, a very expanded hip space. Right leg floats really high up to sky, shape growing even bigger. And then step right foot in between the hands. Back knee can lower down the ground for this first one. Sink the hips forward. Should be feeling the stretch on the front of the left hip, that solar area. Not quite there, but perhaps the toes scoot forward even more so that the hips can lower. And shifting the hips over the back knee for a half split. Be aware here of what the difference is in your body, flexing the foot versus pointing. So pointing is much more of that foot stretch that we were just playing with. Flexing is much more of a calf stretch.
We'll free this directly into a kneeling half moon. So the toes on the ground, as we free up this right leg, the toes on the ground, you just swivel off that left side of mat. That helps the hips to stack, the shoulders to stack. So the toes off the mat for balance. That's it, yep. And then it's a lot easier to stack the shoulders, stack the hips. Good. Option for top hand to grab the back toes, but then push the toes back to create a huge opening for the heart. Good. Continue to let this leg hover as the right hand returns to ground, hip squared down. And the knee to nose. Let's leg back out and lift. Good. Two more. In and out, lift. And one. Good. Drop the knee, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. First and foremost, the hips are setting up as high as they possibly can. That pulls the back into a nice shape. And then maybe there's some space for the heels to lower a little bit closer to ground. It's okay, some people never will make the heels go to the ground ever, and that's okay. But the hips high first is the most important. Good, so let's reach left foot really, really, really high, create some expansiveness. And step that foot in between hands, lower the back knee. Sometimes inch the toes even further forward as you're getting the hips to sink forward low. Good. <laughs> Go ahead and shift that half split. Again, awareness of what we're doing with the foot, pointing or flexing. Going to invite the torso maybe a little bit closer to the thigh. Start to free out the left foot. Swivel the right toes off the right side of mat. Getting a kneeling half moon. Hips and stack, shoulders stack. And option to play with grabbing that hand for foot coming back, but then push it backwards to create a looped shape. Beautiful. The hand drops to floor, the leg hovers. And knee to nose, curl in, reach back and lift. Two. And one. Beautiful. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. A really tall downward facing dog expansiveness. Gazing in between hands, start to walk up to top of mat. It's okay for knees to be a little bit bent if needed. So the back muscles relax down. Inhale to rise, circle the arms up, slight back bend, hands down to heart. Good. Shifting weight to left foot, start to rotate the right knee open. Kickstand is fine. Maybe the foot slides up to ankle, maybe the calf. Never directly knee, that's too much pressure for that. Maybe thigh. Good. Reset the spine tall. Imagine right now the foot is the thing that's expanding outward. 
like it's taking up tw two or three times more space, at least kind of energetically, than the surface area actually. See the branches grow. One more breath in, huge flow. Balance the left foot, the right knee, look and press. Balancing. This right foot steps back, pyramid pose. Both heels are down, both hips are square forward, and start to bend forward. When you get about halfway there, hands can walk down to the shins or the floor, blocks if you have them. So, to create expansiveness for the hamstring here, What's required is some activation of the quads. So that means that the kneecap is lifted a little bit because the quadricep muscles are contracting. When that contracts, it creates more space for the hamstrings on the other the back side. So we're not locking the knee, but we're lifting the kneecap. Two more breaths. We'll play with standing splits. So hands up forward. This can even just be a supported warrior three, that's fine. But if we can get the foot to lift higher than 90 degrees in that standing split shape, if balance is there, maybe the hands walk a little closer, challenging the balance. Maybe one hand wraps around the calf, maybe both hands. Inhale. And exhale, both feet land close to one another. So both feet now spreading open, creating that expansiveness, giving a break to that left. Next, inhale to rise. And down to heart. Shifting weight to the right foot. Rotate the left knee open. Extend is fine. Or start to climb up the ankle. Up the calf. Or to thigh. Maybe we're growing open, expanding the chest. Inhale. Exhale, this foot crosses in front, roll all the way down. the muscles of the foot relax for this moment, not needing to hold us up so much. Getting a little break. Let's start to roll the spine up. I already set that right foot up, it's standing on the ground. Float the left knee for a moment. And step that foot back, pyramid pose shape. Square the hips, both heels are down, both legs are straight, bow forward. And at the halfway point, start to walk the hands down, maybe to shin, 
Maybe to blocks or floor. The kneecap lifts a little bit. I'm not hyperextending, but, but lifting because quad is engaged. That helps hamstring stretch. Deep breath flows in, out, and then bump the hands forward. Start to float the left foot, maybe higher than 90 degrees. With the balance side of it, maybe the hands stay wide, or maybe you're playing with walking them a bit closer. This is kind of one of those poses where you can feel that barn door effect where lifting one thing <laughs> makes it so much more easy to kind of tumble over to lose that balance and to swing the momentum away from where we're wanting to be. One more inhale. And exhale, land both feet close. Feel the feet relax. Feel the hamstrings lengthen together, stretching. Hands slide up the shins, half lift. Exhale, hands plant. Feet travel back to plank. Keep the elbows squeezing in as we lower chaturanga. Back bend of your choice doesn't have to be super deep. Into the spine, how much is it happy to lift? Good. Child pose or down dog. We're in the down dog. Imagine that we're not done yet. We've got a monkey tail wrapped around a pipe, and the more it wraps, the more the hips are lifting up. Up. Everyone joining in down dog, and then right leg floats high. This time, open up the hip. Let the knee bend. The toes come behind you a little bit. Good. Inhale. Exhale, release from that opening and step right foot directly in between hands. Right hand floats, feel the chest expanding open, reaching high. Good, hand drops to floor, back heel drops down, warrior one, arms float up. The more the fingertips try to rise up, the more the hips try to sink down, pulling in those op opposing directions. Good, inhale. Exhale, warrior two, open. Extended side angle. Right elbow rest on right thigh, left arm up, up and over. And warrior two. Reverse. Warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Triangle, reach forward. Drop hand down to shin or floor. Left hand up to sky. The back is open, expanding. Soft bend of the front knee. We're trying to cartwheel down to half moon pose, but if that's too much, play with a balancing star instead. 
if you're going for a full half moon, the right half is to the outside angle, because if you were to set up in a line here, that would be the barn door effect again. So it's an open angle to extend out. Good. Hip stack, shoulder stack. A lot of energy of lift, inhale. Exhale, lower everything down, forward fold. Next inhale, hands slide up the shins, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, travel the feet back to plank. You can skip the flow or join me, chaturanga lowering. Back bend, the downward facing dog. Continuing to lift. Feel how that stretches hamstrings. And left foot floats. Three legged dog, but then continue to open. Toes behind the back, bend the knee. It's like some of your weight pulls back in the legs to pull front of the hips in the stretch. Inhale. Exhale, unwind. Step left foot in between hands. Keep on the back toes for a moment. Left hand raises. This is one of those twisting poses. We'll have a couple of these in just a moment. And lower the hand, lower the back heel down. Sweep the arms up, warrior wall. Feel this heat in the body. Keep breathing. The lungs expanding. Fingertips float up, the legs continue to sink down. Inhale. Exhale, open up for your two. Good. Extended side angle. And warrior two. Reverse. Warrior two. Straighten front leg. Triangle. The reaching of the left hand forward tilts the hips. And then we just rest the hand on shin. Right to sky. Rise. So either play with the star balancing or continue to cartwheel left hand all the way to that outside angle. Never setting it up in a line. But be setting up for barn door. Just leaning open. And if you come out of it, just drop to forward fold if you're sadly drop like that. Everybody joining, standing forward, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands down to heart. Floating the right knee. You can work on the balance here, or you can twist with it. Left hand to the knee, right hand behind. Beautiful. So we're gonna play with a couple of the twisted versions. So bring the hands back to heart, kick this leg back, warrior three. And from this warrior three, we're setting up a twisted version of half moon. So this would be right hand down, left hand trying to float. Good. Bring the left hand to the heart, right hand to the heart, step back, 
So the answer for your one. Hands to the hips, straighten the front leg. Tilt forward like pyramid. So if you need to shorten stance, that's okay. And then to take a revolved triangle, just the right hand goes down to block the floor. The hips stay square. The spine lifts, left hand lifts. Work, drop the hand down. Back to pyramid, or if you want to go a bit deeper, you can travel any amount closer to splits. Front foot forward, back foot back. You can lower on the back knee if you'd like. So just allowing that front leg to get some time to lengthen. Let's do more breaths. to a downward facing dog or child's pose. Know that you can add in a flow if you'd like. Making our way up to top of that forward fold. to rise. Exhale, hands down to heart. Beautiful. Weight shifts to right foot. Left knee flies up. So either stay here or twist. Right hand to the outer left thigh. Left hand behind. Heart. Hands to heart. Take the leg back, warrior three. And then for the twisted half moon, left hand down, right hand up. All the limbs expanding in the directions that they can. Good, right hand to heart. Left hand to heart, step back, swing the arms up. Good, hands to hips. So perhaps shorten stance for pyramid. So then part way forward. And then as the left hand starts to go down, we switch from the pyramid to the revolved triangle. Right hand up. Beautiful, as the hand comes down, you can stay in pyramid or transition any amount closer to splits. Maybe the back knee comes down, maybe not. Maybe just stay in pyramid. More extensive breaths. We all work our way back to child or down dog, maybe out of flow if you'd like. The last ones of the day. Meet up in a downward facing dog. The left leg lifts. Open the hips, hold her behind you. you can stay here or flip wild thing. Another very extensive pose. The hand comes back. We lift back up three-legged dog. And the left foot steps to outside of left hand. Lizard, you can keep the back knee lifted or lowered. You can keep the elbows lifted or lowered. You 
then a block can be a nice kind of intermediate spot. up to hands, we'll transition to pigeon. So this left foot needs to work its way all the way over to the right until we can set the side of the knee down. The back knee scoops back. And let's start off with some back bending. So that could just mean hands stay planted for a little while. That could mean right hand goes to the right toes or elbow. Stay in the back bend portion as long as you'd like. At any point that you'd like to drop down the sleeping pigeon, you can make your way there as well. It's up to you how long. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Huge breath in and out. Choose your recovery shape. It could be kneeling, it could be down dog. Have some movement, loosening up the tight spots. Eventually, the right leg floats through like a dog, and the knees and the toes behind. Either stay here or flip wild thing. And return, three legged dog, right leg lifts, and right foot steps to outside of right hand lizard. That knee can be lifted or lowered, elbows can be lifted or lowered. So you'll notice I'm wrapping up with a couple of these heart openers, like that wild thing and like this next one coming up with pigeon. The idea is that that's an area where sometimes we try to almost play small and hide is our chest and heart area. We're giving those last couple of heart openers just to allow that space to be open, to be shining. Even that part can spread to all directions. So let's start to head there, the hands plant. Start to walk this foot all the way to the left until the knee can swivel down. Scoot the back knee back. Maybe hands just stay planted, maybe left hand to the left foot. At least have a moment where you feel the heart energy expansive. And same as before, you can drop down to sleeping pigeon at any point that you wish.
last inhale. Long exhale. This time we'll rock our weight onto your right hip, the legs hang out in front of us, take a few windshield wipers. When that feels good, we'll come to a comfortable seated place and take just three more of those breaths, expansive. Inhale, exhale down the center. So get it extra slow. Third one with hands at the heart. If you'd like to sit here for a moment, that's fine. If you'd like to take some last stretches before Shavasana, that's fine. If you're ready to just lay down or go into any shape that feels good, that's fine. From this point, it's heading toward just that last restful phase of class, the integration period. a rush to be in Shavasana, but when you feel like your energy is ready for that point, think of the quality of expansiveness, whatever that means. Maybe that's the physical body opening up just a little bit more than normal, or maybe that's just the breath, being extra expansive in the chest.
and to deepen inhales and exhales. Introduce little movements back to the body. Stretching out in ways that feel good. Perhaps taking some time with the fetal position off to one side. Writing the breath back to expansiveness, even here. It's another full breath cycle or two, only rising up to comfortable seated place when you feel ready. So here with hands at the heart, we can kind of feel in our body some of those poses like the half moon when just the slightest difference if you're stacking things in a line, how unstable that feels. It's easy to swing the momentum away from where you want it to be. So instead, we feel how this expansiveness is in our feet, in our heart, in our limbs. How nice it is to just be open for once. Open to on this physical level and open on those other levels. Expanding outward in this spiritual direction. Expanding outward in this emotional direction. Creating many directions, many supports. So that you have so much to hold you up. So with all of this to help lead us on, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of Om. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.